Today's show is about horn speakers. And, well, it's my journey of living with and reviewing lots and lots of horn speakers and just having experiences out in the world listening to other people's horn speakers. Because there is something, something that horns do that other types of speakers, other really, really good speakers, don't. And that's what I'm hung up on right now. Now, you guys might remember that I live with some big horns. I had Clips Cornwall 4s for about three years, on loan to me for three years, and I love them. And I actually really do miss them. And before I had the Cornwalls, I also had Forte 4s here for a couple of years. So it was a pretty long stretch of horns being my reference speakers. I also started the ball rolling when I reviewed the Klipsch RP600M and also the 600M Mark II. And when I reviewed that speaker, I was really taken aback by what a fairly small stand mount speaker could do in terms of delivering the excitement of horn speakers for a very, very affordable price. And, I, and then I got my friend Herb Reichert. He reviewed them for, for Stereophile Magazine and many, many other reviewers on YouTube and in print and online started really paying attention to the Klipsch RP600M. Okay, but what really started this going, what really set this whole thing in motion was when I went to visit Ben to listen to his reconfigured system with Devon Turnbull speakers. These are large horn speakers. And he's got great electronics. Just everything in the system is top notch. Anyway, so Ben just happened to play uh, music by a band called Justice. Now they're French, it's uh, called uh, electronic slam, I guess is the category, the type of music it is. It's very electronic, it's very intense music. And when he started to play it for me, my first reaction was, oh, it's too loud, turn it down. And Ben knows that I don't like to listen loud. But I thought, well, wait, it's not really that bad. So anyway, I continued to listen, and I took out my phone to see how loud it actually was. Uh, and I see, oh, it's only 82 dB. But it, it peaks. But it seemed louder than that. It seemed more powerful than that. And I'm sitting there thinking, I listen to horns a lot, but there's something going on in this system that communicated that kind of energy in this music that other speakers don't do. That's it. <laughs> That's really it. So uh, I was shaken and stirred by the experience and of course I did the audiophile thing and I went home and I listened to Justice on my system with Pure Audio Project speakers. And no, <laughs> that was not happening. All of the, the intensity, so much of the power of that music was just lost over the Pure Audio Project. Which in the scheme of things isn't a big problem because that's not really the kind of music I listen to every day. But still, the difference, even when played at exactly the same sound pressure level, no, my system was a mere shadow of what was coming out of Ben's system. And that's what really got me thinking about this. I went to Miguel's apartment to listen to his avant-garde horns. These are big horns in a very large room, much bigger than Ben's space. And I'm listening to these speakers, and I'm playing them, again, louder than I normally would because they're just so easy to listen to when played loud. And I'm playing some jazz and horns and everything. I'm thinking, man, the sound of brass, of brass instruments played over horn speakers. Well, it's no surprise there. It sounds so real. The attack, the transients, all that stuff was just so real. Then I played uh, Brian Eno's Apollo record. This is one of his ambient recordings. And the sense of space and depth and, yes, immersion was absolutely extraordinary. So, yeah, while these speakers' horns tend to project sound forward, these speakers can do so much more than that. Really, really first-class sound. So the thing that I get so jazzed about with horns is how they have, how they communicate live sound, as in, this is happening right now. The, the, the leading, I was going to say bleeding edge, the leading edge transients are so clean and crisp and clear. 
but it's, it sounds like you're at a concert. Now there's a cliche, but horns can do that in terms of giving you that sort of excitement. And, and the other thing that, that uh, Miguel's speakers did so well is the sense of air, that you're hearing the air of the original space, like the concert hall. It's part of the you are there experience. Okay, so the next horn system I listened to was truly extraordinary because it had nine, count them, nine clips horn speakers, modified clips horn speakers. And they were being powered by Mark Levinson Electronics. And the turntable is a turntable only system where uh, old techniques, direct drive turntables with Kuwetsu cartridges. Now, here's the backstory. So this system, the, the conception of this system goes back to 1970 when a gentleman named David Mancusa, who lived in New York City, uh, he lived in a loft space and he didn't quite have the money to pay the rent, so he had a rent party, which was a pretty common thing. I guess it still is. Anyway, so he, he had a dance party in his loft because he had a great sound system, not this system. Uh, and that has, over the years, over these many years since 1970, continued. And that, unfortunately, David Mancuso passed away in 2016, but his followers, the let's say the lofties, uh, they kept it going. So anyway, I was invited to hang out at the setup for the nine speaker system. And also I came back the next day because it took a lot of time to set up the system to the actual event. Now these speakers were modified <laughs> for club use because the uh, mid and horn tweeters are elevated about four feet over the height of the base cabinet. So it would be firing over the party goers heads. And uh, the sound of this system was uh, big. So what they did is, by the way, with the nine speakers, they separated the speakers. On the left side of the room were all the left channel. On the right side of the room, all the right channel. And the system sounded, well, yeah, big and dynamic and effortless. That is the word that I would use. That's true for many horn systems, just maybe more so for this one. That, and by the way, David Mancuso wasn't into playing as loud as a typical club would be. That he was never chasing loudness, he was chasing sound quality. And that's why he put so much money into the electronics and the source and all that stuff. But anyway, oh, the first piece of music that they played at this uh, party that I went to, this loft event, just happened to be Louis Armstrong singing John Lennon's song, Give Peace a Chance. It's a very strange arrangement. I assume it was done in the early 70s. And uh, it's, it, which, it really put everybody in a good mood to hear uh, Louis Armstrong singing this very strange song for him. Doesn't fit his type, right? But anyway, it just felt like the right way to do this. It just set the, the bar, so to speak. And I was digging, just taking it in and, and watching these people who came to the party, which were not audiophile types, by the way, who were just there to have a good time and dance and have fun and listen to this extraordinary system. I wasn't dancing, but I was feeling it. I was feeling that energy of something that's been going on since 1970 here in New York City. And to hear it in a big space, this room was probably 50 foot square. It actually had really good acoustics, shockingly so. And maybe there was a lot of sound treatment or something going on in the ceiling. But anyway, the sound was great. Uh, I can't say that it imaged well because it had nine speakers you know, in the perimeter of this room. That was a happening thing. But in terms of filling the space with music that sounded, well, depending on the recordings, of course, sounded real. And I had a great time. Next up is, uh, I want to talk about a speaker that I haven't heard lately. It's probably at least five years since I heard it, but the JBL Everest. And this is a large, very, very heavy speaker. Matter of fact, there was some plans of actually getting me a pair to listen to here, but that never came through. But anyway, the Everest is a more refined sounding speaker than certainly any clips I've ever heard. It's, it's got purity, it's got clarity, it's more of a, maybe like a studio monitor type sound. But again, it had that ability to play very loud, but 
didn't seem loud because it was just so clear and the distortion was so low that you could play it loud without it, well, hurting, hurting my ears at least. So that was also a biggie on my list of horn greats, you know, my greatest hits of horns or something like that. You know, when, when I was preparing to do this video, I was also thinking about when I met Herb Reichert, this is in the mid 1990s. He lived in a converted firehouse. He had this huge loft space in an old firehouse and his speakers, I'm pretty sure the speakers were uh, voice of the theater, all tech voice of the theater, really big and really ugly speakers that most people wouldn't want to have in their house. I'm looking at them all the time, but Herb didn't care. And I think, and by the way, one of the first pieces of music I ever heard over those voice of the theater speakers was Sinatra. And, and he was playing Sinatra and Dean Martin, <laughs> Tony Bennett, that sort of stuff. 1950s, 1960s recording in a big space coming out of these big horns. And it's like you just throw up your hand and say, I got it. These are just incredible speakers. So, and so many more. I'm not going to give you the whole litany of horns, but I just want to say that if you've never lived with a horn speaker and you need, you, you need to, you need to taste what that is like. So as I started working on this video, I was thinking about the speaker that started it, at least this chapter of my life with horn speakers. And that one is the Klipsch RP600M and its successor, the 600M Mark II. And they have been part of my reference budget system for many, many years now, because they do things that no other stand mount speaker anywhere near their price can match in terms of dynamics and life and energy that just frees the music in ways that other speakers with flush mounted tweeters cannot. So here's one more horn experience that I just have to tell you about. And that is I went to a jazz kissa jazz club here in New York City it's called All Blues at 87 Walker Street. And the atmosphere was very chill, very relaxed. And the speakers, they had two sets of speakers set up. They were both playing at the same time. A JBL Paragon. This is truly iconic stuff. And also JBL Hartsfield speakers. And the sound was deep and immersive and very, very involving, which I think is the point after all, right? This is the kind of club you don't talk at, you know, it's, it's kind of just a listening lounge. And for that, I very much appreciate it. So if you're in or near New York City and you're into the jazz kiss a thing, check out All Blues. So yeah, if I've made you uh, horn curious, absolutely. The Klipsch RP600M Mark II is the way in. <laughs> and speaking of the way in, yes, it is now time for the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. These pictures come to us from Shankar. He lives in sunny London. Anyway, his integrated amplifier is a Burmester 082 and that just replaced his name Unity Nova. The DAC is a Denefreps Pontus II, the 12th anniversary edition. Now those speakers, very unusual looking speakers. I've never seen those before. They are made by acoustic reproduction technology. The model is the Deco 20 signature and they feature uh, Alnico tweeters. Speakers, by the way, weigh 220 pounds each. They were made by the Dunlop brothers in Scotland of System Deck fame. There's also a Blue Sound Node X. The turntable is a Roxanne Athesa. The speaker cables are made by Transparent and they are the Music Wave Ultras. The rest of the system is using AudioQuest cables. Thank you, Shankar. We are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. If you dig what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider joining my Patreon to do so. Super easy to do. You could join for a couple of bucks a month, up to 50 or 100. And at the top two tiers, you and I will have a conversation every month at the beginning of the month. Anyway, with that out of the way, I can now say my work here is 
at last complete. Thank you again for watching, and I truly do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.